Drop it. Good day, everyone. My name is Kenneth Alojado, a graduating student. A graduating student. Good day, everyone. My name is Kenneth Alojado, a student from ECE 5B. And today, I will be discussing my microwave point-to-point -point link design. Microwave point-to-point -point communication. Point-to-point -point microwave has been the connectivity choice for telecom carriers, corporate organizations, and government authorities for many of years. Point-to-point -point wireless is the ideal alternative for business communication between two buildings or sites where wired connection is either impossible, costly, or impractical. Ibig sabihin, it is a wireless communication from one location to another. It has been very useful sa mga telecom carriers like Globe, Smart, etc. Now, Let's discuss the place for construction and placement of towers. Ang napili kong location for my first tower is Tanawan, Tanza, Cavite with a latitude 14.2925, longitude of 120.8308. It has the elevation of 63 meters above sea level. And for my second tower, Pinili ko ang Talon Uno, Las Piñas City with a latitude 14.4442, longitude of 120.9878 and it has the elevation of 30 meters above sea level. Given that the distance between Tanaw and Tanza Cavite and Talon Uno, Las Piñas City is 28 kilometers, now, let's discuss the value of additional obstruction, coconut, plus 15 meters above sea level, dry rock, plus 0 meters above sea level, urban, plus 20 meters above sea level, and these are the additional obstruction that I have encountered. Formulas and computations For earth bulge, HT is equals to D1 in kilometers, D2 in kilometers over 12.75 K. Substituting the given values, at 0 kilometer, the earth bulge is 0. At kilometer 1, the earth bulge is 1.588 meters. At kilometer 2, the earth bulge is 3.059 meters above sea level. Total obstruction is the sum of elevation, additional obstruction, and earth's bulge. After listing the elevation per kilometer, additional obstruction, and after computing for the earth bulge, total obstruction, you will get the following values. For the Fresnel zone, the formula is F1 in meters is equals to 7.3 times the square root of distance 1 times distance 2 over frequency in gigahertz times the total distance. My frequency is 7.6 gigahertz. Now, let's proceed to the computation. By substituting the given values and using the formula, at 0 km, you'll get 0. At kilometer 1, you'll get 16.1622958. At kilometer 2, you will get 8.551887186. Now, for your Fresnel clearance, the formula is 0 0.6 times the values of your Fresnel zone up to the 28 kilometers. 
This table shows the values of your Fresnel zone and Fresnel clearance up to 28 km. And this is your formula for line of sight. LOS equals H plus HO prime. The formula for C first. C first is equals to LOS minus HN plus HO prime. Using these formulas, you will be able to get these following values. Now, let's discuss the path profile. Ito po ay graph lang ng lahat ng values na nakuha natin kanina. Base sa ating graph, Makikita natin hindi sa sabit ang Fresnel zone. Makikita rin dito sa graph na may agwat pa sa pagitan ng Fresnel zone at ng total obstruction. So, I have decided to use a 25 meter as the height of my towers, both the transmitting and the receiving towers. Because it is the most economical height of the tower. Now, let's proceed on materials and equipment used. First is the transceiver. I have decided to use PTP800 7 to 8 GHz kasi siya ang pinakang compatible sa aking napiling frequency which is 7.6 GHz. Transceivers. In radio communication, a transceiver is a two-way radio that combines both a radio transmitter and receiver that exchanges information in half-duplex mode. And this is the specification sheet of PTP800 7-8 GHz. As you can see, the TX power is 30 dB and the sensitivity is negative 90.9 dB. The next one is the waveguide. A waveguide is an electromagnetic feed line used in microwave communications, broadcasting, and radar installations. And I decided to use WR137. Next is antenna. Antennas are much more than simple devices connected to every radio. They are the transducers that convert the voltage from a transmitter into a radio signal. And I have decided to use DA6W71BC. And this is the DA6W17BC specification sheet. Since the weather is unpredictable, I have decided na gumamit na secondary power source which is the diesel generator. Para if ever mawala ng kuryente from Tanza, Cavite, magkakameron pa rin sila ng communication papuntang Las Piñas City. Ang idea ko is 5 by 5 meters ang sukat ng rentable na lugar na pagtatayuan ng aking tower. Now, let's proceed to our link budget. Given that the height of our tower, HT, is equal to HR, is 25 meters. The frequency used is 7.6 gigahertz. And the total distance between two locations is 28 kilometers. For free space loss, the formula is FSL is equals to 92.4 plus 20 logarithm of frequency in gigahertz plus 20 logarithm of distance in kilometers. Substituting the values of frequency and the total distance, FSL is equals to 92.4 plus 20 logarithm of 7.6 plus 20 logarithm of 28 which will give you 138.959 decibels. For transmission line loss, TLL is equals to the sum of antenna height A, antenna height B, waveguide length multiplied by the TL loss multiplier. 
given that the TL loss multiplier is given by the waveguide. TLL is equals to 50 meters plus 6 meters multiplied by 6.5617 over 100, which will give you 4.0683 decibels. For atmospheric absorption loss, AO is equals to 7.17 times 10 to the negative 3 plus 6.09 over frequency squared plus 0.227 plus 4.81 over frequency minus 118 squared multiplied by frequency squared times 10 to the negative 3. Substituting all the values that is given, you will get 0 0.0065 dV. For fade margin, assume that R is 99%. Fm is equals to minus 70 plus 30 logarithm of d in kilometers plus 10 logarithm of 6ab times frequency minus 10 logarithm of 1 minus r. Again, substituting the given values, you will get 26.64 decibels. For your connector loss, given that your insection loss is 0 0.21 dB, it is given by the specification sheet of the waveguide. COL is equals to insection loss multiplied by 2 and you will get 0 0.42 dB. And now, let's proceed with the total loss. Total loss is equals to FSL plus TLL plus AAL plus COL plus FM. Substituting your computed values, you will get 170.09 dB. Received signal level. RSL is equals to sensitivity minus required FM. The sensitivity is provided by the specification sheet. Substituting the given values, you will get negative 64.26 dBm. Now, let's proceed with the total gain. Total gain is equals to total loss minus PT plus RSL. Substituting the given values, you will get 75.83. Since the receiver and transmitter is the same, GT is equals to GR is equals to 75.83 dB over 2 and you will get 37.92 dB. For the actual antenna diameter, 37.92 dB is equals to 17.8 plus 20 logarithm of 7.6 plus 20 logarithm of the diameter. Computing for D, D is equals to 1.334 meters. The computed diameter is 1.334 meters. Since it was not exactly available in the market, I choose an antenna with 1.8 meter as its diameter. Now, let's proceed to effective isotropic radiated power. EIRP is equals to PT plus GTX minus TTL is equals to 30 dB plus 75.83 dB minus 2.03415 plus 0.21 dB and you will get 103.5885 dB. For isotropic radiated loss, IRL is equals to EIRP minus FSL. Substituting your computed values, you will get negative 35.37 
0.05 dB. And now for the reliability. Reliability minus 10 raised to fade margin minus 30 logarithm of D minus 10 logarithm of 6AB frequency plus 70 all over negative 10. Substituting your computed values, you will get 99.999712%. And that's it for my microwave point-to-point -point design from Tanza Cavite, papuntang Las Piña City. I hope may natutunan po kayo sa aking discussion. That would be all and goodbye. Thank you po.